Just so happy to have you here, and uh, this is the Karen Sprague Stone Carver Shop in Rhode Island. And today, Rob Gill and Javier Alfonso are carving glorious slate pieces that you're going to get a close-up look at. It's a really low-tech but lovely, lovely place. So we can take a little tour around. So come on in and, and meet Javier. I've been at the shop for seven years now, carving professionally. So um, yeah, this is a beautiful piece that uh, I did all the lettering uh, a couple of months ago. And now I'm finishing a piece here for a sculptural element. So beautiful star sun burst. Uh, there is the design. So the design gets to be translated for uh, stone. So we're carving the lines here, then we're gonna shape some of the uh, flares around and um, yeah it's a wonderful piece so yeah, I'm enjoying it so I much. I like the strong graphicness. So yeah, yeah I mean just beautiful drawn letters hand carved letters <laughs> that Javier has done and then in the middle of this is this beautiful purple piece of um, sea glass that's been cast and that will be inset here and light will pass through that and so it's an added uh, material combining glass and slate is something that really lights me up. So let's go see what Rob's working on. Uh, another beautiful piece of black English slate from the Lake District, Kirkby blue black slate. And there is this design that is going to have rope around the entire perimeter of this. So he has taken it down to, to be a cylinder and I'll let you uh, talk a little bit more about what you are doing. I'm making it into rope. <laughs> the best way I can figure out how. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah, slow process. Uh, slate isn't like, it's not as fun as limestone, I would imagine, for doing this. Not that I've done this in limestone, of course, but yeah, it, it, it's very chippy in certain directions, so I'm just having to take it fast in some places, slow in others. I mean, how else are you going to carve rope without a rope? Without a rope. So without this... This incredible exemplar was what we were going for, for the dimension to really make that look like rope. This is a piece of Vermont green slate. And the lettering was um, carved by Javier Alfonso. The paint brushes that you see here, Rob Gill, and the gardenia, the gardenia that is just so exquisite, just soft. I mean, you could get your nose in there and smell it, and that is a gardenia. <laughs> And um, it's got a tenon. It's going to be mortise and tenoned into a granite base and then set in Brooklyn, New York at the Greenwood Cemetery. This is kind of nice because this shows a bit of a transition. So some of you know that Karen and I have worked together for 20 years in this shop. And I have been recently, my shop, as I said, started probably about 10 or so years ago. And I've been kind of doing work here and in my own. And so this was kind of the transition. So I was able to carve this. And then Rob has come in, and he's been willing to put his hand to the relief work. So that kind of releases me to go about my work, but still yeah. have a connection here with, with Karen. For 20 years, this, this studio is where it is today because of this woman and, and her woman. skills <laughs> that I would draw something and what do you think and she'd say great well, what if we do this and so she would enhance some of the drawings enhance a whole concept and together we'd create these one-of-a-kind memorials these monuments that are out there I'll show you another beautiful um, piece that's back here this is limestone the lettering again hand carved by Javier Alfonso this is for a couple who are alive and well and have commissioned their uh, headstone now. And beautiful sculptural element. 
and this three-dimensional dog that's on top is uh, Bob and Clay's, one of their beautiful dogs, Lulu. So Tracy Mahaffey is the sculptor here with incredible detail and depth and a story that's happening in here. And the other pieces that we are going to be, um, the second side still needs lettering on here. This will be heading out to um, in the mid-states. So this is the back side. We still have to then turn it over. So the bottom 12 inches goes below grade. And then there's a sub foundation 36 inches below that. That's nice. You have, like you said, the gravestones that go directly in the ground. You have the, like the limestone one right. on a base. And right. even the right. slate one that you talk about right. that has the tenon that goes into a granite base. So it's, it's a nice variety when it comes to the design and the, the actual installations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the chisels that, that they're using are these just beautiful carbide tip chisels. Javier, do you want to speak a little bit more about the tools? Sure, sure. Um, well, we have um, we have a variety of uh, different sizes, and um, depending on the lettering, uh, we choose a wider uh, chisel. But they, they, like she says, they're carbide, and then we have to sharpen them as 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 often as as we decide. Some people ask me how often do I sharpen mine. I don't have um, a specific number to say every three four letters I sharpen. I I kind of listen to it. I kind of see it. I feel it, and I know it's already dull, and, and, and then I go for it. But they're super sharp um, as a knife, <laughs> and we test it on the fingernail, and, and it's funny because when we sharpen them, we immediately go on the fingernail, and then we shave it, and if he shaves it, it's because it's super sharp, and it's good for the stone. So um, I do that, and everybody squeals. I go, no, yes, I'm not cutting they, myself. Exactly. <laughs> so I don't know if it's a, a badge that we wear, but our fingernails have like little, <laughs> little divots, and it's because of the chisel. So yeah, and um, as far as the, as far as the other, you know, important instrument, which is the mallet, we have these dummy mallets, and um, it's just all we use. I mean, different sizes and and also different weights on the on the mallets so yeah i hope that answers Thank that you. and i'd also like to point out how the easels with the gantry with the chain fall above work so rob's going to just show you how this small tablet that he's working on to work on it upright um, you're noticing we're working upright it's healthier for for the body so i will let you come about to really see how that chain fall is working mounted up top to a joist and then a span set comes down from there to grab the bottom bits and just a little bit at a time takes it up it leans against these back pieces here and these can be moved to whatever level they need to go to to put it at whatever height it needs to be at to work and then just gently back down I think it's uh, time for a Guinness. <laughs> I would so love to be in Ireland right now with this. And, and I want to, you know, reach out and say, you know, hello, Tom. Hi, you know, hello, Pat. I know you guys are hopefully watching. I'll be watching everybody else's. And thank you, Tracy, for this idea to come into the shops in Rhode Island to see this work that is so one of a kind, made with this heart that is and these hands, it's, yeah, it's clearly, it, it, it's so much love that goes into each one of these pieces. So, and that's what, you know, what I really like to show is that's why I'm doing this tour, as I spoke about. We're all really good friends as well as mm -hmm. colleagues, as well as we're here to share information, mm -hmm. we're here to help each other. And I think it's really different and special that we have these three shops and that we have this relationship. And, and again, I always talk about the cross-pollination. I think it's amazing what happens. And I think that just gets imbued right into the work that we create.